Today we are solving together the biology question that came in paper 2, October 2017, Chigboyne Science Exam. Question number 1. Anglican and her friends are planning a party. They were to prepare a food that will be part of a healthy, balanced diet. They find this information on the internet. This is the pyramid at the base of it. Eat most cereals and whole grains. Eat more fruit and vegetables. Eat moderately dairy products, meat, fish, eggs and beans. Eat less fat, oil, sugar, salt. You should also drink six to eight glasses of fluid, including water, weak tea and soap every day. A. The information states that a person should eat mostly cereals and whole grains. I. Which group of nutrients is provided by cereals and whole grains? Of course, you know that the cereals and whole grains, they contain carbohydrates. They contain carbohydrates. You also can say starch. So, if you are solving this question, we can say starch or carbohydrate. We can say starch. And it will be correct. Or you can say carbohydrate. Okay. Double I, why do we need these nutrients? If you mentioned the starch and carbohydrates, they are the main source of energy. So we need them for energy. Okay. So, B, people are advised to eat more fruit and vegetables in, her, in the diet. This helps to prevent them from developing deficiency diseases such as scurvy and rickets. Name the group of nutrients which help to prevent these deficiency diseases. You know, of course, it's vitamins. It's vitamins. Okay. C. Eating too much fat and oil can lead to health problems. State one harmful results of eating too much fat and oil. Of course, you can mention here a lot of things. For example, you may mention obesity, you may say uh, heart disease, you may say um, high blood pressure, you may also say diabetes. All of those are considered accepted valid points. So we can say here obesity. We can say obesity. We can say high blood pressure. Question number four. There are still many undiscovered species of animals and plants in remote parts of the world. The diagram shows a newly discovered species which scientists have classified and named Isothrex parbaroporni. Uh, anything, if you do not know how to pronounce it, it's a scientific name, mostly it's Latin, so you can name it uh, and name it X. You can say it's named X. Question number A. Name, these class, name the class of vertebrae that include isothrix. Circle the correct answer. If you don't know how to answer this question, there is a piece of advice which by excluding the wrong answers. So, firstly, if you are going to answer this. Number one, amphibians. What are the most characteristics of amphibians? They have moist skin. They have moist skin. But this do not have a moist skin. So amphibians is a wrong answer. Birds. Birds have wings and feathers. And this creature do not have wings or feathers. So it's correct answer. Fish has, ha, huh, they have scale, they have fins. And this do not have, of course, any one of those. So it's a mammal or reptiles. So it may be a mammal. And also it may be reptile. If we would like to exclude one of them, 
We're going to say that reptiles have dry scale skin. Dry scale skin. And this do not have this. So it's not reptile. It's a mammal. It is a mammal. Why? If you look here, it has external ear. It has whiskers. It has fur. And all of those are considered the characteristics of the mammals. Okay, question number B. Give two reasons for your answer. Those what I just mentioned. Those what I just mentioned. If I want to answer this, I will say um, any one of those. It has external ear, for example. It has external. Okay, I may say the hair. Okay, or or fur. All of those I consider the characteristics of mammals. Question number seven. Ravi and Jamila investigate photosynthesis. They set up their apparatus as shown. Here we have a flask of water that containing dissolved carbon dioxide because this carbon dioxide will be used okay in the process of photosynthesis there is a water plant there is a funnel and here we have an inverted glass tube and of course here there is appearance of bubbles and there is a lamp as a light source they want to find out how changing the distance of lamp from the water plant affects the rate of photosynthesis Surely, if we would like to answer this question, we may say that they can measure the number of bubbles, okay, and also they can measure the distance of the lamp away from the beaker. Also, they may measure the time taken in order to obtain a specific amount of the, yes, of the uh, air bubbles. So, we can say that, number one, they measure the number of bubbles, number of number of bubbles number two they can measure the distance of the lamp the distance of the lamp yes if you are going to answer question number uh, b ravi and jamila do the experiment here are the results. Those are the results from the experiments. On the x-axis, there is the distance of land from the water plant in centimeters. On the y-axis, number of bubbles produced in five minutes. In order to understand this properly, we, I'd like to draw the line or connect the points in order to make it clear. So if we are connecting those points together, so the line is clearly shown so we can answer the question. Question here says, describe the pattern shown by the results. If we have a look here, we can find that as the distance increases, the number of bubbles decreases. So we can say that the farther the distance the farther the distance, the fewer or the yeah the less number of bubbles, the fewer the bubbles, the fewer the bubbles. Yes. Question number twelve. Different cells have different functions. Draw a line from each cell to its function. Cell to the left, function to the right. This is, of course, the nerve cell, and its function is to transmit nerve impulses around the body. Those are the red blood cells. Their function is to, yes, carry oxygen. Yes. And this is the sperm cell. Its function is to fertilize the cell or the egg cell. Question number 15. 
Look at the diagram. It shows some different varieties of varieties of pigeon. We have here the wild rock dove. We have here the pouter pigeon, the pouter pigeon. We have fantail pigeon and racing pigeon. A, the four pigeons are all of the four pigeons all have different colors. Describe one other differences, one other difference that you can see in the diagram between a wild rock dove and fantail pigeon. If you are looking here for the differences between the wild rock dove and the fantailed pigeon, we can find out that here there is there is no additional set of feather. While it's very obvious in the fantailed that it has yes extra set of tail feather. This is extra set of the tail feather. So we can say question number A. It has extra set of tail feathers. Yes. Uh, B. Racing pigeons are specially bred for speed and stamina. They bred for speed and stamina. Describe one, fe one feature of the racing pigeon shown in the diagram that enables it to fly at high speed. So if we make a comparison between the racing pigeon and the rest of all of the pigeons, we're going to find that it has a streamline. We can see also here it has an aerodynamic shape and it will be also considered correct. And also it has the, yes, the longest wing in all of them that gives it a high power for the, uh, yes, for flying. Here it has small wing, here it's very small wing, okay, and here is not that uh, big in comparison to the racing pigeon. So we can say in the racing pigeon that it has streamlined shape and also we can say it has large, large wing. You can say it has aerodynamic Okay. Aerodynamic shape. By this we finished all of the questions of the exam.